Hi, I'm Rhonda Pick, Managing Editor of Pig Health Today. Joining me is Dr. Brandi Burton. She is a swine veterinarian with Sue Today Health and Production. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You are doing some fascinating research in related to MHIO mm -hmm. um, with replacement gilts. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, sure. So um, we kind of raised the question on why we aren't using an anamorum sample to inoculate some of these, these animals for mycoplasma um, exposure. And right now the gold standard is using lung homogenate. Um, it's really well studied. There's been a lot of documentation and different protocols that have been um, really you know, nailed down. So we kind of were thinking of an alternative and I've had quite a bit of experience doing the tracheal sampling. Mm -hmm. And so um, our idea was to look at that fluid that we're collecting when we do that diagnostic testing and can we use that? In theory, we, were, we didn't think there was any reason not to be able to. So um, what we did was basically just diluted that and created an inoculum and intratracheally administered eight mils of the solution to 30 gilts and tested them 16 days later and they were 100% positive for PCR. Wow, um, yeah. that's a really rapid response for an MHIO situation. Yeah. Yep, and so um, after that we were shocked as, as you were. <laughs> and so we wanted to test what's the spread. So we can inoculate them, but then what's the spread of, of this process? And so uh, 26 days later, after we did the inoculation, we tested contact animals and non-contact animals. And so the, the way the barn was set up, um, we inoculated half the gilts in four pens okay. and then had half of them not inoculated. So we called those direct contact. And then there was two pens that we called fence, fence contact. And then across the aisle was non-contact. And we had 100% positive in all the direct contacts, so within the pen of the same inoculated gilts. Which you probably expected yeah. being a yep. direct contact, mm -hmm. right? And that'd yep. be a one-to-one -one ratio there, yep. um, which is kind of what you expect, especially with uh, MHIO. And then the fence-to-fence -fence contact was about 80% positive in those. And then the ones that was really surprising was actually across the aisle was 100% positive. At first, we pulled them by five, and then once we saw that they were 100% positive, we wanted to look a little further into that. So we tested uh, 15 of those individually and still 100% positive. And over how long of a time period again? That was 26 days after inoculation. Wow. So looking at the numbers, we are feeling re relatively uh, successful in that we can take those 30 gilts and say we essentially had 100% uh, positivity within 26 days or 30 days if you want in the, a group of 158. So so where do you where do you go from here? Yeah. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at is, so that was just basically a, a proof of concept. Yep. Um, just does it work, does it not? So now we're going to dive into that infectious dose. How much, what's the minimum or the high CT that we need um, in order to inoculate them? We're going to look at potentially fogging. A lot of practitioners mm -hmm. really like that, that technique and process for exposure. So can you put this in a fogger and be as successful? And then also looking at that cedar ratio. So the 30 gilts that inoculated 158, that's kind of abnormal. So we want to see if yep. that, is that a real, is that real what we saw? That's a, about a four to one ratio. And so um, that's atypical of uh, MHIO. So want to look at further into that and see if we can kind of nail down that cedar ratio. And how were you, more specifically, how were you monitoring transmission of the disease? Mm -hmm. Initially, I've just been doing uh, tracheal sampling yep. um, as, and then just doing uh, PCRs on that. Yep. Going forward, I think we'll add the component of doing ELISAs and some, okay. some serum. Let's shift gears a little bit more and talk about application. I mean, there's a lot of potential application, I would assume, with this being kind of an unexpected finding. Mm -hmm. So what, what should producers know or what should they be thinking about as they hear this new research come forth? Yeah, I think just keeping an open mind and being a little creative when um, thinking about exposure processes. And yep. uh, it's definitely a benefit that we don't have to euthanize these animals to collect that lung homogenate for many reasons, welfare, uh, genetic potential of these gilts. A lot of them are gilts and sometimes you have to do, use several of them and uh, the, the cost benefit of not having to euthanize an animal. So um, just using this as you know, when you, a lot of farms for elimination processes already are doing those tracheal sampling anyways. A lot of veterinarians are doing those routinely um, to diagnose the farm. So it's being done anyway. So you can just take that sample and be, have it multifunctional and use it again as inoculum potentially. What are some best practices that you use in clients you work with as far as managing MHIO? So having a just, I think, a good understanding of the flow um, and what your status is as a flow. Um, you know, with MHIO, the, the consequences that you see with it on the cost side are the, the grow finish, the mm -hmm. grow finish pigs. And so um, having an understanding of what those, those pigs are, are doing downstream as far as when they're going positive, 
and um, such. And we, we, we know it doesn't really generally uh, transmit laterally, so it's almost always coming from the south farm if they do have it. And so making sure you're approaching health protocols on the south farm to address that, and you can monitor that by doing, um, we do cross-sectional studies, for instance, and look at five to six different age groups on one day okay. and do uh, tracheal samples amongst serum and oral fluid collections as well. And uh, you can get a good timeline and see multiple ages at the same time and kind of get a, a set for the flow and what their status is. And I think doing that at least twice a year was, is a good way to kind of keep that surveillance and then mo uh, modify protocols as needed. What are some new, uh, new tricks in your toolbox in the past year that you may be implementing with clients that have been really successful? Yeah, so finding the right timing of medications is really important, starting on the sow farm and the baby pigs, mm -hmm. and finding uh, medications that can kind of limit those clinical signs early on, and then going downstream into those effects. Uh, also, the timing. You don't want to be too far behind the ball, but you also don't want to be too far in front of it. So what lies ahead as far as your future research projects? You've made, been making a lot of progress, but mm -hmm. uh, there's always more to the MHIO equation. Yeah, so I think implementing this on a, an actual elimination pro uh, program is going to be really important. The one farm that we did do the study on originally is looking to do an elimination here uh, relatively soon, so that's why we kind of use them as our little test herd to see if Great. this can um, you know, be applied in spe specifically on this farm. And so um, implying that on a farm and seeing how it goes, um, you know, with the whole closure process. And we're also going to be doing a study here in the next couple of months, uh, figure, trying to figure out that minimum dose that we have to give. So we're gonna take the sample that we've been using and dilute it out and see at what ratio of the um, solution we have, we can successfully inoculate these, these gilts. So as we close our discussion, what would be a one or two key take home messages for producers that they can learn from the research you've been doing? Yeah, um, we can save animals by doing it, by doing it this way and it is relatively easy to do. And there's a little bit of a, I say a negative stigma when it comes to tracheal sampling and the invasiveness of it. Um, and being that you have to be an expert and you really don't. So if you have the tools, you're doing the sampling anyways, um, you know, being a little bit more uh, cautious and um, conscious about using what we have at our, our hands already. We've been talking with Dr. Brandi Burton. She is a swine veterinarian at Suaday Health and Production. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.